Hi, I'm Justin Freed. This is episode 103 of In 30. I am here with Paul N. Shapiro of paulnshapiro.com. Hi. Paul's very excited to be here. And I'm here with, wait, I can't remember his name. Wait, wait. You're talking too slow. Let's go. we got 30 minutes and an hour's worth of stuff. Okay. Time.com. I'm here. Let's go. I'm is very, I'm is very excited. I'm is very excited. And I would like to say that the big news is that the royal baby's name is um, Chrome something, right? Good. You didn't spoil it. I was I, I was busy all day. I did not get to read this news. All right. Hi. What was the name of this announcement from Google, first of all? Did it have a funky name? That's what we're covering today on episode 103. It's, what was this? The name was uh, Breakfast with Sundar Pichai. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah. Did the press get breakfast, by the way? It looked like they had coffee and some and some scones. Okay. 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 So, was the announcement deserving of coffee and scones? Why don't you Why don't you take us through what you think is the biggest thing announced with breakfast at What was the fellow's name? With Sundar Pichai, head of Chrome and Android. Okay. So breakfast breakfast with Sundar Pichai. We'll say breakfast with Mr. Pichai. What was the biggest thing that Mr. Pichai, besides his recipe for scones, what What was the biggest thing that he announced? The big well, we're gonna go backwards, but the biggest thing they announced is a new device that's that's going to merge the Nexus Q, which I wish I had here because I would pour a beer out for it, uh, a Google TV, and it's gonna be a USB stick that sticks into your TV called Chromecast. And we have a lot of questions, but let's get through. Let's go in order. Wait, hold on. Okay, well, let's correct a few things. First, I think it's interesting that you say that it's it's the amalgamation of the Q and Google TV. Um, is, is that is that your analysis, or did, are you borrowing that from Josh Topolsky? I'm not borrowing anything from Josh Topolsky, but it it looks like if you ask anybody who really watched it and who wants uh, Google TV or a Nexus Q to succeed, this is what they're going to say. Okay, I so, will put money on that fact. Okay, so conceptually that's where it is, but it is not in fact a USB stick at all. It's an HDMI stick with a USB input for power, the, which is a problem. Okay, wait, hold on. So this is see this is where I think you break down, Heim. Most modern HDMI ports power devices. So most new TVs, let's just say 2011 and on, will power devices through the HDMI port. That, it is not a USB stick at all because that USB port on the back, as far as I know, is, is only for power. So it is a standalone HDMI stick, you can say. Well, it comes with, and they have really hid this, and I want to harp on this later, a USB, a micro USB for power. And they said it, but they hid the fact that you actually have to connect now two things into your TV. Well, okay. time, time. I, I assume that's for TVs where the power input doesn't work with HDMI. Correct. Well, correct, sort of. You're correct on that, and it... and. If it doesn't, then you need to put it into a USB, whether that be an adapter into like a wallet wart or something else. Or it, it, it can be powered by an iPhone USB charger. Okay, so let's just back up a little bit. This is a teeny little device that is, is, is probably the size of a USB key circa 1997, if they even existed then. And it plugs directly into your TV. It gives you an interface for Chrome, but it must be controlled by another device. So it, it requires an ancillary device to do anything. It's a mirroring device. Um, Correct. Basically. Okay, so so it, it because mobile devices are so popular, it seems that everyone that's in your living room is going to have one in, in their pocket. It doesn't pay to have an interface that's so firmly linked to the TV. Well, I want to bogart that for later. I want to save all of this for later. I want to start with, with 4.3. Okay, but I really do. Uh, then that was the biggest announcement. That was the no, biggest. no. It's the one that's going to take thirty seconds to go for. It's going to take five minutes to discuss the whole thing. The Nexus Seven is going to take five minutes, and then we have the rest of the time to mm -hmm. answer a zillion questions. And wait, Paul, what was Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's baby's name? Just North, Northwest. It? Okay, just, okay, just to get that out of the way too. All right, so wait, we're all, we're almost done with the basics of this of this uh, Chromecast thing, which is kind of a weird name, I think. How much is it, Hein? It is thirty-five dollars. So it is it is within a certain range of society. It is, it is throwaway money. I mean, this is like if you like electronics. Already on order. I did not need to clear it with anybody. I just bought it. No questions asked. I got. I'm probably one of the first people to get it online. So you are saying that you didn't have to ask your, you didn't have to consult the family budget. 
because Correct. of the price. Is that what the Google marketing team was? They were saying, all right, what is the this threshold at which time time will not? Yes, but let's go on. I want to talk four out three. I, I'm going to still harp on this, and because it's quick, basically four out three jelly bean. It's still a jelly bean variant. Basically, adds a whole bunch of internal things to hardware that needs to be supported by your phone. Nothing is really special, other than. Other than the, here are the two big things: Bluetooth Smart, which is Bluetooth low power. So I think that's the iPhone 5 has that, which doesn't really affect anything. But it's for mainly fitness devices. It's things that use Bluetooth, but not always need to be on. So that's going to allow Bluetooth. You're well over 30 on. seconds. Okay. Okay. And the other big, th the other big thing is restricted profiles. And I was going to talk about this today on Heim Time, one of those rare posts. That's basically saying they they heard the in-app problem. Remember, Apple just refunded eight, five or eight thousand dollars to two separate sets of parents when their kids just went on and bought in-app purchases. Here, you can give your child a restricted profile and say no, basically ban in-app purchases, and they won't even know that there's an in-app purchase issue. Basically, it's the non-candy aisle, the checkout line. Okay, but it, the, the the key thing is. Um, not that it's it's like parental control so much as that it's secondary users on a device, so multi profiles overall. Just to just to get well, that it's out. not only multi profile; it's also so you can have the multi profile. But let's say you you put the profile on your kids and say it's the same as my profile, but take out email and any sort of in app purchase. Don't even allow. Don't even show. They can't access the store. They can only access what's on the device. So, Paul, in the pre-show, Hein was telling us that the dot, the point updates, basically, of Android are going to be hardware management updates, essentially, only. Obviously, this feature has nothing to do with the hardware. Where, where, is, where does 4.3 fit in? Is, should it have been Key Lime Pie instead? I guess that's, that's the big question. Well, um, this different profile thing? Well, in, in relation to Heim saying earlier that the, the point updates for Android were, were going to be only kind of hardware, um, like... Uh, Disagree with me. Well, if it you're doesn't no seem to be the case, other than the Bluetooth, right? The low-power Bluetooth, the smart Bluetooth. That's hardware-based. But that's so, the only thing, right? Well, you have this restricted profile, which comes, nat which comes natively on 4.2. OpenGL... Yeah, but basically what they're saying is, you know what, we've learned that we're not going to get the manufacturers to update all the time, so we're doing back-end things. So when you do come out with a new device, an HTC One X or an S4 or, or the Note 3 or these Motorola new devices from yesterday, it's not going to matter whether you get it right away or not. The people that want it are going to get it, but the people that don't have it, there's not. if you tell them there's a better uh, DRM support, what are you going to say? You're going to say, oh. eh. Oh my, wait. Okay, so this this point update is not is not only tied to the hardware of the Nexus Seven. It's also a feature update, and it seems like this is an excuse for Google to fragment their hardware even further. Because tons of people would want the profiles that will now there will be a, a whole other layer of devices that will not get it, right? Uh, correct, unless you have four point two. Wait, I, I, what? Wait, hold on. Is the profile thing a 4.3 feature? No, the profile was a 4.2.2 or a 4.2 feature, and it just got updated to have slightly more functionality in 4.3. Okay. Well, what okay, sort so of functionality? It's functionality based. I mean, okay, so, so basically, if you pick up my tablet, I can add a profile for Justin Freed or Paul Shapiro, and it will and it will bring in all your stuff, and it's password protected and all that stuff. So you can come on my device, log out, log into my log into your profile, and have everything. That that's what it started out to be, and now they just added some sort of restricted profile that just basically is more granular parental controls. Okay. Oh, or... is, okay. That, that's what I didn't understand. It, it is parental controls, essentially. Okay. That, that, so what else is 4.3, though? Is it, Paul, is it true that 4.3 amounts to a hardware, like, driver update for Android, or, or, or is, this, is this a feature update? Uh, the, the Bluetooth feature sounds interesting. Um, can, can you clarify that that's a that's a software feature opposed to like Bluetooth 4.0, which is um, lower power usage, but this 
adds lower power usage to uh, a previous version of Bluetooth? If your device supports Bluetooth low energy, 4.3 will take advantage of it. Is that, is that, that's a, so that's a, a hardware software thing together? Correct. Okay. So it's a, it, ha, it has to be hardware and software. So overall, on it, is this is this a Nexus 7 update or is this an Android update? Are you going to get it on your Nexus? What, what phone do you have now? Nexus I have 3? a Galaxy Nexus, which is uh, about 20 months old, and I will get it. I, the Nexus 4 will get it, the Nexus 7 will get it, and the Nexus 10 will get it, as of right now. Okay, you better know when your newborn is 10 months old. Um, all right. So, so are, are, we, are we done with Jelly Bean point three? Uh, I mean, basically, yes. It's that's that's basically the crux of it. There's a lot of other little features, but in essence of time, that that's the big thing. Okay. So okay. So th this is all right. So you now are we ready to go back to what? What do you want to do here? You, you, Nexus you Seven. I'm okay. trying to convince you to buy Nexus Seven. All right. I was okay. So let's start with the price point this time around. It's two hundred and thirty dollars for sixteen gigabytes and Wi-Fi only. And then it's fifty dollars more for thirty-two gigabytes and Wi-Fi, and then. I think it's a hundred dollars over the base price for thirty for thirty two gigabytes and LTE. Is that right? Correct, and it allows Verizon LTE, which is a weird uh, trade off because I we almost had this unwritten rule that Google and Verizon were not going to do business anymore on hardware. Okay, so okay, so let's compare this thing to the iPad Mini. First of all, specs wise, like on paper, this thing kills the iPad Mini quad core processor, much higher resolution screen. Um, the, I think four times the RAM, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you, you're the one that told us that your Nexus 7, which you got at an I.O. a couple of years ago now, is feeling sluggish, and actually its performance has degraded steadily since the release, it seems like. Is, the, is this Nexus 7 going to do the same thing? Is, does, it, does it make me not have to spend, what, $399 or $329 on an iPad mini at 16 gigabytes? I am not upgrading my Nexus 7. I will. It's not worth it. It the, for the specs. I do not play games, which is where the power needs to come from. And to be honest, I don't watch that much video where the 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 whatever you want to call it display, the highest pixel density display on any tablet, will be necessary for me. So wait. So now you have the Nexus 7, the old Nexus 7. I don't know how they're going to deal with the branding and an iPad. Okay. Okay, the Heim is now showing the Nexus 7 on the Hangout. It has this white back. If I'm, if, if I'm just going to not even explain what that is. If you know what it is, you can you can be jealous of Heim. Okay, so why do you ever use the thing? I mean, do you ever use it, or are you tied to your iPad too because the apps from the App Store are that much better? No, right now I always have the choice of picking up which one, and I always gravitate towards uh, the Nexus 7. I, th I like the 7-inch form factor. I like that it's connected to all my Google accounts. And and as my phone is degrading in sluggishness, my, the tablet picks up the slack, and, and I'm recommending it to people. If you don't have a Nexus 7 and you want a smaller tablet, get this. If you're ingrained in iOS, then we have to talk. But if you if you're looking for a tablet, just go buy it. You will be happy. I guarantee it. So, Paul, would you consider doing an Android tablet at two hundred and thirty dollars, and then a regular two hundred dollar upgrade to the iPhone 5s? Would that would that make it so that you don't have this tension between choosing between Android and iOS for your main device? Right. Um, I mean, the price point's enticing, but I, I'd probably flip it around. I'd go with an Android phone, and then. Maybe get an, uh, I already have an iPad, but maybe an iPad Mini or another iPad, or even just stick with my existing one. Okay, so wh so what? Why is the tablet form factor better suited for iOS in your in, in, in your point of view? Then what, why reverse what I said? Um, I'm I'm really happy with my iPad. Um, I had a friend who had a Nexus Seven. Um, I wasn't too thrilled with it, having played with it. There was uh. It had an issue right off the back. It it didn't like rotate if you turned it around. L little little things. I, I don't think it was as good as an iPad. I see. But you're saying that the Android phones compete better. Paul, when did you play with this? When did um, you get it? Before December or after December? Because that's I, important. I, I could not tell you. It, it, it was a while ago. Um, because after December, 4.2.2 .2 came out and it squashed 
all those bugs because I had the same issue. And as soon as the 4.2.2 update came, I was extremely happy with it. So, Hein, from your perspective, does Android compete better against iOS in the pocket form factor or in the coat pocket form factor? I'm going to say it competes better. Look, Look, I'm Android all the way, and I think that you can do much more with Android, so I like it on all form factors. I mean, the iPad is great, and the apps are there, but it just feels childish. And my Nexus 7, I feel like I can actually get stuff done. Like, really, I can get a lot more stuff done than an iPad where I have to say, okay, I have to do this, I have to do that. I can share things with my with different with different services. It just makes so my life So why don't we all get Windows Slate? RTs or whatever the hell they're called then, if you want to get stuff done. I mean, that... that... Look, it's a personal preference, but if you're saying, do I want to spend three twenty nine on uh, on an iPad Mini or two nineteen or two twenty nine on a Nexus Seven? I'm going to tell you to go Nexus Seven all the way every day. And I'm now with the high end display, with the five megapixel camera on the back, all the stuff. I, I you can't go wrong. Okay, all right. So, so another thing. Is, sorry, Justin. Um, in terms of having. Android on a phone opposed to a tablet. Um, I think Google Now is a is a factor. I think you're more likely you're always going to have a, a phone on you. You're not always going to have a tablet on you. Um, and Google Now will will work better with a phone. I see. Okay. So so does so the, so does Google then begin to to pull back on its iOS offerings in order to, to start winning more people over to Android hardware? Because if, if, if what you're saying is that it's, it's the integration of the services that's most important and that you want to have the most uniform, reliable access to Google Now or the, or the, 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 the best uh, experience using Google Now, you do want it in your, your pocket, absolutely. So wh- when, does, when, does, when does Google start out-appling Apple then? I mean, what, when... when when do I, as a Google user, jump ship entirely? I, that, that, I guess that's... that's I, I, I kind of want to. I, I'm telling you, you're Android curious. We, we've discussed this on numerous episodes. Paul has almost said that he's going to switch to Android with his next phone. So we have two people here that were, hard, were, hard, were st- ingrained in iOS, and now they're saying there's something there. You listen to Sundar Pichai and he goes... We also have a million apps in the App Store. I don't know of too many apps that are iOS only that are that are neat that you need to have. Vine is now there. Instagram is now there. Uh, Pocket Cast is was Android first. I don't know of though that too many of them. And to be honest, the UI for me it just feels easier. Now iOS seven may change that, but you're going to see in the next segment why I say that. I disagree with you, Justin, that, that Google is now going to put their apps on both platforms and say, you know what, we don't care anymore. We're done playing this game. Whatever device you have, you will be happy with our services. Okay, so I just want to refer to something that Paul said a couple of episodes ago, which is that the, the quality of the apps seems to be better, I mean, anecdotally, on Android, that you're... you're on there's iPhone, le- iOS. It, it, I'm sorry, on iOS, thanks. It's, it's, it's just there's, there's a kind of clunkiness that's, that's been evened out by the time things reach the App Store versus Google Play. And there's still the malware issue, right, Time. I mean, that's still floating around. Well, you still have the hu- – you, you have bugs on both sides. And, Ooh, okay. And uh, if, you ru- if you can go to Cydia and get a malware-laden app, just like on Android – Android has a quote-unquote virus scan built in, and if you sideload apps, you can get malware, which is what they found out in the last go-around. So either way, if you do unauthorized things that you shouldn't be doing, you're at risk. But let's move okay. on. Now let's talk about what everyone wants to hear. <laughs> What you want to mean, <laughs> also known as what you want to talk about. Please, Han, take it away. Okay, so today Google announced something called Chromecast, and in its very simple terms, it's supposed to be what Air. It's supposed to do what AirPlay did. So it is this uh, HDMI dongle that looks like a USB that sticks into your TV, and how they showed it was really interesting. So you're watching a YouTube video, and now you want to show it on the screen. You push this little button, just like the AirPlay button, and it will. If you have the right TV, M E C E something. I don't get me on. Don't get me started on that. Will turn on your TV, switch the input. 
which was the biggest complaint that we've had, and now display it. And they're saying, guys, hardware develop or developers, you can build this in, and the SDK is already online for you to start doing it. So if you're watching a YouTube video, you push the button, it starts. You're listening to play music, you push the button, and it starts. If you're in Chrome, you push the button, and it starts. They had a Netflix demo. You're watching Netflix, and that goes back to 4.3, where the secure DRM, but it will then display. So all these things will just automatically display. It will switch your input. It's remoteless. It, there's no remote because they want you to use your device. And if Pocket Cast wants to integrate it, we should have gotten them on. They can integrate it. If HBO Go wants to integrate it, whoever wants to integrate it, you don't need to get the iOS store approval to or Android approval to be integrated. Okay, so it sounds like that that Google has certainly leapfrogged AirPlay in sheer convenience. The fact that they're, they're making use of this acronym that you don't know exactly to switch the input and even turn the TV on is pretty cool. Um, and you're also saying that, that, that SDK-wise, there anyone can build it. basically any video that you see on in Chrome. Anything. Anything, because there'll be a tab. If you want to show text on a screen, a PowerPoint presentation, you push the button. Okay. Can I have a DivX player? Well, that's the biggest question that everyone's saying. Will VLC be supported? And my answer, without really reading into this, is sure, why not? Why can't VLC incorporate this? Because all they have to do is build it in. Or, and the question is, will HBO Go? Because HBO has gotten problems. I don't know if you can AirPlay HBO Go onto your big screen. Air, AirPlay is... You, they build it into the Apple TV now. There's an there's an HBO Go app on the Apple TV. And in fact, you, you can't use your phone to remotely control an Apple TV. You're kind of stuck with doing um, either airplane mirroring or using the, the Apple TV remote, which is not elegant. So now there's no, here's the good part. There's no apps on this thing. Everything is controlled from your, from your device. And here's the good thing. This is what I was trying to get back. It's iOS enabled. So if you have an iOS 6 phone, you will be able to use this on Chrome, on YouTube, and uh, Netflix when they update it. And, uh, the and I can check my thing. Gmail on my 50-inch LED. Theor theoretically. So, and it brought back the stuff that I like Chrome, uh, the Nexus Q, the best. You can have a Q. A Q-U-E-U-E, -E, not the letter Q. Where <laughs> is if we're playing at a party, and Paul's like, I want you to see this, this video, he can just come in and hit, hit play and it goes to the queue. And if your device uh, stops and you leave, it's still there. That They showed that. So it has this memory sense that will remember who's what was playing last. That, that was my next question. How device dependent is this? Because is everyone going to have to have 10 micro USB chargers or, or lightning bolt chargers coming out of their couch cushions? Well, the way the Nexus Q worked is it didn't actually use your Wi-Fi. What it did, it did the connection via NFC, but it used Wi-Fi to, to tell, to go to this device and get it. So if you're watching a YouTube video, it will go to YouTube based on my connection and do it. It just needs the initial, what do you want to watch? Maybe Netflix won't do that and you have to use your device, but you can turn your device off as they showed. If your Nexus 7 turns off, it will still play. Now, when you say off, do you mean a locked screen, or do you mean power they down? Showed, they showed the display off. Okay. So it, it could, in, in theory, though, this $35 HDMI dongle has enough brain power to, on its own, stream a YouTube video and, and to, to connect to Wi-Fi, et cetera, et cetera. That's what it's showing. We'll find out. All right, so, Paul, we talked about Roku and Samsung. Samsung uh, bought Roku. Where, where is this place, Roku and Boxy? Or, I'm sorry, Samsung bought Boxy. Where does this place those guys? Um, the price point's huge, $35. Um, it also, it doesn't run apps. Uh, it, it's just essentially uh, streams the Chrome browser on the TV. Um, apart from the SDK, which uh, turns on the HDMI input and, and the TV power. Um, I had an interesting question. I was discussing this with a coworker today at work, and he said, why can't I just plug my computer into my TV? You want me to, I can answer that really well, you, simply. You can, you can do that, though. Then you have you to can. Your, 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 you got to get a wireless keyboard and put that at your couch. And da, 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 da. Well, let me pose a question. 
Okay, and this question happens a lot. If you're watching a movie on the the, the cable networks, will you get up from your TV to the DV, your DVD catalog and oh, and do the whole TV switching? That's the question, and they solved it because it will just automatically switch the input. Okay, but we're, 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 do people want the apps on their TV? I mean, what percentage of people that would, would, would go for something by Boxy or Roku don't have a device that is going to be super compatible with Chromecast? I mean, that, that's, that's the question. And the other thing is, it takes the burden off of people to design interfaces that are good at 10 feet. I mean, you're, you're, if, if you can focus 100% on, the, the video will have to look good on, on, the, on the TV, but the interface for getting to that video, it's, 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 it gets rid of the whole idea of a universal remote. No one gives a crap about that anymore because that, that question has been answered through the, the, the interface on a smartphone. Is that better? Is that, is that experience better than... Well, let's than ask Paul. Paul is the one who watches the most amount of TV and movies, I think, out of everybody. If if you had to now find and switch inputs, are you more likely just to sit there, or are you more likely to actually do the whole switching thing? If you had to go switch from from cable to Netflix, would you do it, or would you rather it do it automatically based on you touching your tablet? Because assumingly, you're going to have your tablet or your phone with you. Right. I mean, I'd r I'd rather do it automatically. I have that <laughs> problem now. I my, my current setup is you know I have a Roku on my uh, on my Netflix hooked up with my Netflix, and then. I have um, Western Digital makes uh, a very cheap little box that you could hook up an external hard drive to and play like um, you know downloaded movies, DivX, XFit, etc. So it, it, I'm constantly switching inputs. So. And if this does it for you because you have let's say the Plex app on your Nexus or on your iPad that connects to your media wherever your computer and streams content. Isn't that just so much better? I'm not saying this is going to replace Roku. Roku is going to have its place there, and all these are going to have this place. But I think this stops the. This helps people lean back, and we've talked about leaning back versus leaning forward. I think it replaces Roku. I don't want a Roku. I, 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 I would, you know, when I give presentations from my iOS device, I have to bring my Apple TV with me and an HDMI cable and plug it in and do the whole thing. And I would just, just. Form factor wise, I would, and the fact that in most HDMI ports, oh, you know, I'll, I'll bring a backup cable in case, but most H HDMI ports power this thing. It's that much better. And if it's going to switch the input for me with some, if, it, if the TV has some like newfangled crazy acronym that I'm going to have to Google later, great. It's, it's better. It's better than AirPlay. And I don't want, I don't want to learn a Roku interface, and I know how to get to video on my phone, and I, you, I already use YouTube Remote. From my phone to control YouTube on my computer, so I'm already I'm already getting the AirPlay experience, or, or the the Chromecast experience, excuse me, um, albeit on my 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 fancy new 50 inch watt or my my new really wide monitor. I mean, now, I, for Paul, Paul does presentations just like you um, and me, for that matter. We can just take this device and stick it into think about it, stick it into the projector at at your job, and then use your phone or your tablet to mirror the display. I think for $35, you can't go wrong. You don't have to worry about a power plug. You don't have to worry about anything else. You just need your device, which you currently have, and your and your and the Chromecast. I think this is perfect. Now, obviously, none of us have perfect. it yet. Do we get a PowerPoint plug-in for uh, Chrome? A Google slide. Docs in the Chrome Google browser. Docs. Okay. Google, you know, do 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 the Google slideshow thing. So. Look, Apple likes to make a, have a huge margin on its products. What is the total cost of an Apple TV now? They've, they've shrunk the die size in one iteration internally of the Apple TV. They're probably pumping these things out, and, and they're $99 and happen for quite some time. Maybe they cost Apple 20 bucks now, $25. Is Google just making no profit and using the same kind of hardware that's already in the Apple TV? And this is, this is, this is a, like a... A software. This is, this is software. Well, core, in the 45 core. seconds that we have, Google realized that they can't compete with the media company, but they have the best media company out there. They have YouTube. So if they can leverage YouTube and they can deal the, with the content distributors with YouTube, they have won. And for $35, you don't have to do the switching, and now you're, you just click the button and watch YouTube on your TV, on your 50-inch TV in 1080p like they have it. I think they've won. 
I ordered mine on Amazon with Prime. I did not pay three dollars for shipping. Fifteen Prime. seconds. Let's say goodbye. I won. And we'll keep this I, won. I won. I won. Last I, thoughts, anybody? I told you, I won. I didn't pay for shipping. This has been episode okay. one hundred and three of In Thirty. You can catch us on Chromecast in a couple of days. Bye.